Hi, this is Bruno Pelletier Backer. I'm going to show you today a little exercise that's going to help you move from a major seventh to a major sixth chord. So, um, those chords are actually quite interchangeable. You know, oftentimes uh, you might see a chart that will call for a major sixth chord or a major seventh, and the truth is you don't have to play what it's telling you to play. Uh, as long as you're thinking in terms of a tonic major chord, um, you can play a major seventh when they're asking for major sixth, or vice versa. You can play a six nine, you can play a major seventh with a ninth, etc. etc. So um, more in, as far as today is concerned, more interesting is going to be the actual uh, finger exercise because that's really what uh, so here's my C major 7, and I'm going to turn it into a major 6 chord, C major 6 chord. So the only note that changes is the B going to an A. However, I need to change everything, you know, because we can't uh, move this finger over that one unless we rearrange everything. There's actually one finger that could stay in place. It's the fourth finger. You know, we could sort of anchor it and then rearrange the other fingers around it. Um, so here's, here's the idea. You can go back and forth between your two chords and try to be as clean as possible. You can strum, I'll roll. Like this. Um, little tip here, when you have a chord such as, in particular, the, the major sixth chord, where none of the fingers are really resting against another one. See here, for instance, I could say that fingers three and four are sort of a unit because they can work together. You know, they're they're glued together in the chord. But in this chord, that's not the case, right? So, oftentimes people will do things like this, or maybe two and then two, or some you know some weird configuration. The idea is you want to teach all four fingers to land at the same time, simultaneously. So the way the way I um, I practice that, or I tell people to practice it, is to do this. So first, let's look at the the major six chord. So let's first make sure we have a nice chord. You know all the all the notes should be nice and clean, right? And then we're gonna simply do this, just press down and let go. Press down, let go. And we don't need to press hard at all, and we don't need to strum either. Um, the idea is to get all four fingers to work as a unit, right? So, I'm gonna get even a little closer. You see, when I'm not leaving the strings. That's the idea, right? I'm just, Applying pressure, letting go. Pressure, letting go. And I'm not pressing hard at all. And once I'm comfortable doing this, then I can start to barely, barely lift my fingers off the strings. See, again, I'm barely, barely leaving, lifting the fingers off the strings, hardly at all. Right? And then gradually I can go a little higher and higher and higher and then, you know, then I can, I can play my, my chord. So I'm teaching my fingers the right spacing between them, but my goal is to land all four of them at the same time. And that's very important. That's the only way you can play your chords uh, clean. So eventually um, they land exactly where they need to. So again, major seven, major six, and what we can do is move up and down the fretboard. So right here I'm playing B flat, here's A, major seven, A six, A flat, G. You can move back up, you know, chromatically like this. Make sure you find a, the right tempo, not too fast, not too slow, but everything is nice and clean. And you can play things very uh, staccato or stay a little longer on each chord. Okay, so um, different, 
the important things to keep in mind is land all four, all four fingers at the same time. Also not move too far away. You know, don't move your, I mean, I'm exaggerating here, right? But don't go too far away when you go from one chord to the other. In fact, just stay pretty close. Like almost, you're just basically um, gliding over your strings. You know, you, you don't leave everything because you're gonna start hearing all those open strings anyway. So stay pretty close. Okay, so that, that's the first series of exercises. We can do the same thing, interestingly enough, with the same exact grips, if we shift everything down one fret, uh, down one string, I'm sorry. So if I go for instance, let's do it from C. So here, you recognize the exact same shape that I was doing here, right? But it's a different chord now. It's gonna be a minor major seventh. The notes are C, E flat, uh, G, and B. You know, it's a... Uh, and we're skipping that string. There's nothing going on on the fourth string now. And if I move to this shape, which was the same shape I was playing a moment ago with my major sixth chord, now this is a minor sixth chord, so I'm going basically from a minor major seventh chord to a minor sixth chord. So I'm gonna, I can do the same, same little business, move around um, up and down the neck. It's a nice way to warm up your fingers, nice way to, to learn uh, about you know, being precise and everything. Um, you can even combine both those exercises. Let's say I'm going to start here from the D part. So I have D major 7, D6, and then on the same fret, I'm playing G minor major 7, and G minor 6, and then move around. Let me do this one again, I messed it up. So. In fact, you should find that um, your hands, well, particularly this one, is, warm, is warming up nicely. You should feel the blood moving around all over the hand. It should be a, a, nice, uh, a nice sensation. Um, the last thing I'll show you here is doing the same type of, um, of move from a minor 7 chord. So if I'm playing a C minor 7, and if I lower the seventh, which is now a minor seventh, right, down to the sixth, I'm only moving down a half step. Uh, previously, we were going from a major seventh all the way down to a major sixth, so that was two frets down. Now from the minor seven chord to the sixth, we only go down one half step. I want to remind you that what we call a minor six chord, here from C, is a minor triad with a major sixth. So the sixth itself, the interval, is major, but the triad is minor. So my four notes here would be C, E flat, G, and A. All right, so minor seven, minor six, minor seven, minor six, minor seven, minor six. So this is A minor, this is A flat, this is G, and you can go back up. So what's actually interesting here to note, when I'm playing what I call a C minor six, what I can think of is really an F9, so a dominant chord, F9, with its fifth in the bass. See that? Simply by moving the F root down onto the sixth string, I'm playing the fifth of the chord. And in this case, even though I can still call this F9, I don't have any Fs in the, in the board scene itself. So when I go from this to this, it's almost as if I were going from this to this, which would be a 2 5, you know, C minor to F, B minor to E, B flat to E flat, A minor to D7, etc. So when I, when I play this little exercise here, that's a, this little chromatic descending passage. Um, 
there's a, there's a song uh, by Charlie Parker, uh, Blues for Alice, where we have that moment here, B flat, A minor, A flat, the G minor, and then C, and then it finishes with another turnaround. So that part, B minor to E flat, which is what should have been. It's a series of descending chromatic two fives. Um, going all the way down to G, I can do it like this, thinking minor seven to minor six, A minor seven, A minor six, A flat minor seven, A flat minor six, and so forth. Okay, so I hope you find this interesting. Oh, actually, I was going to forget. There's also an equivalent um, with the next uh, string set. So. The C minor seven. Don't leave. Don't leave. One more little thing. So the C minor seven that I had here, I could play it here. So it's a different, you know, slightly different grip now. I have still the same notes: C, E flat, E flat, and then G. And when I go to the the minor six form, I'm using now this. So basically, like this. So here I can keep. So I hope you find those interesting. Uh, we'll we will talk next time about turnarounds. So I can we include those little movements in uh, in a particular turnaround. In the meantime, let me know if you have any questions, and talk to you soon. Bye.